Today I have good news and I have bad news. The good news, the folks at Mazda have finally gotten around to shoehorning the 2.5 turbo into the 3. The bad news is this does not result in a Mazda Speed 3 for you or I. To help us better understand the impact of this, not only are we going to drive the vehicle today, but I was able to coax out of his hibernation bunker the president of Grumpy Old Man Racing, as well as the master of all techno babble at Mazda, Mr. Dave Coleman. It might look on paper like we just took the CX-9's uh, 2.5 turbo engine and stuffed it in here. It took a lot more work than that just to stuff it in here. It seems like it's the same engine because it still makes 320 foot-pounds of torque. It still makes 250 horsepower on the expensive gas and 227 on the cheap gas. But actually, there's a lot changed uh, on this engine uh, relative to the CX-9 that it originally came out of. To fit it into the smaller engine bay here, the whole front half, all the spaghetti here had to be re-engineered. In the CX-9, it has a, an air-to-air -air intercooler down there in the nose. Um, we've made, used a more compact air-to-water intercooler that's built into the intake manifold under here now. And the whole transmission case is new. The internals are the same. Some of the ring gear is a little bit different, and the, and the uh, back of the case where it would have run into the firewall is more compact. And then its brain is actually completely different. Uh, it's been retuned, but not just in that, you know, we give a little more fuel here and a little more timing there. Uh, the basic logic uh, that it uses to figure out how to run is fundamentally different. So this is a completely new generation vehicle here, as we call it our seventh generation platform. The engine originally was in our sixth generation platform, which is what the CX-9 has. Uh, and so all the electrical architecture has to be new and has to be running on the new logic. So all of the, the really hard work was the software guys figuring out how to retune this engine to behave very familiar way with fundamentally different algorithms running the thing. For all the blabbering that Coleman does, he forgot to tell you the most important part. 3,383 pounds, depending on how you express your weights and measures, 1,534 kilograms. If this were a sedan, it would be a whopping four pounds less. With that. And yes, that is in sport mode. That's pretty good. Um, I wouldn't call it fast, it's quick. It's definitely quick. The power comes in clearly between 3,000 and maybe 4,500 RPM. Not much below that, and color me surprised because I fully expected a bit more low end grunt. So uh, some feedback to uh, Coleman and the gang, perhaps if you could sort that out, really would appreciate it. So I'm gonna tell you the, the couple of things we did to retune the steering handling on this car. I'll start at the back, and the least expected thing that we did is we changed the rear differential mount. And the reason for that is that when you're sending as much torque to the rear wheels as we are, the old differential mount would bottom out uh, against the floor of the car and send all kinds of noise into the car. And so we would have to cap the amount of torque that we could send to the rear wheels to the point where it really wasn't all wheel drive enough. So we've beefed up that mount. We can now put three times as much torque to the rear wheels as we could with the standard 2.5 liter engine in this car. That gives us enough to really take the burden off the front tires coming out of a corner, uh, make the car rotate neutrally powering out of a corner. Really, if you're in the snow, it'll even get to the point of power oversteer. The way we got there is through an algorithm that is so stupid simple, you'd wonder why we didn't think of it before. All we're doing is figuring out how much load is pushing down on each tire and putting the torque on the tire that's pushing down on the ground the hardest uh, because that's the one that's gonna have the most grip. So you simply look at the G sensors and the yaw sensors in the car, have a little vehicle dynamics model that knows how the weight is shifting around and you send the torque to the tire that needs it. Way simpler than looking at windshield wipers and outside temperature. And way more effective when you get out on dry pavement and you wanna make the most of the handling of the car. We've got G vectoring control in all of our cars now, which is our own little technology that is doing a weight shifting trick when you turn the wheel, shifts load onto the front tires, makes the car respond more precisely, more consistently. This is the first car where we actually have two different GVC algorithms. When we go into sport mode, we have a more aggressive weight shift onto the front tires. So all the shift schedules are changed. We make sure the downshift's under braking, it doesn't shift in the middle of a corner. And when you're turning in at the high speed corner, it is shifting enough weight to the front tires to really make it bite. The totally expected thing is of course, yeah, we changed the dampers and we changed the springs. This engine and transmission especially is a bit heavier than the, than the non-turbo version. Version, obviously. Surprisingly, we were tuning them 
just to get the car back to where it was handling wise. And the reason for that is there's a real basic fundamental thought in how we tune the steering response on these cars based around really fundamental human motion theory. It's called minimum jerk theory. That means that every time you move a muscle, uh, you accelerate it in the same way that minimizes the jerk of that motion. And so we'll instrument the passenger's neck muscle to see how they're responding. So the reason we retuned the dampers and the spring rates, especially in the front, was to get it back with the extra weight in the nose of the car to get your neck to be happy with that same minimum jerk response. Being that Coleman once again touched on his bobblehead theory, let's look at the flip side of driving dynamics and that would be ride quality. And that is absolutely where the suspension as well as the tune of the suspension stands out unusually good ride quality when you consider this car really competes against Corollas, stuff like that. It doesn't have quite the suppleness of say like a, a lower end Mercedes or a lower end Audi. In fact, it's a little bit closer to a Lexus in that it's more softly sprung, which brings us back to the point that Coleman has belabored now in I think two or three episodes. Do I feel myself jostled around more? I can't honestly say I notice a huge difference, but the biggest thing I notice is when you drive it around town, there's a certain road presence and the ride quality that one would not expect in a vehicle that weighs just under 3,400 pounds. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game of mine, the options game with today's contestant, a sorta hot rod Mazda built by Mr. Coleman. This one called a 2021 Mazda 3 2.5 turbo all wheel drive for a base price of $29,900. Then there is the color. This is finished in a stunning shade of soul red crystal. We've seen this on many other Mazdas before. This one is on offer for $595. It is paired with a black interior, not a great choice. Gonna have like a tan or maybe like a saddle interior that would look really good with this soul red crystal. However, I do wanna point out there are two other extra cost option colors on offer. There's the machine gray, which that looks stunning not just because of the machine gray, but one could have a red interior with that one, $495. And then there's a white. You charge you $395 for a special white. Would not suggest that one. Anyway, let's press on to the one factory installed option into this car, and that is the Premium Plus package. That makes the car a bit fancier. Leather interior, navigation, a bit better rear view mirror, rear cross traffic alert, some safety doodads, changes the coloring on the spoilers, $3,850. Then this car has two port installed options, floor mats, optional. On a $30,000 car, $125. Then this stainless steel bumper guard here, that is $125. Then destination and handling from Japan, which is where it's built, $945 for a total retail price of $35,540. Now I have deliberately left one item for last. And that is something you saw in some of the original sneak peek photos of this car Mazda released. And those are BBS wheels. Yes, they come from the factory. It's really an accessory technically. And those are on offer for $918. That is not for all four wheels. That is for each wheel. The biggest feedback I can give you is you notice the torsion beam more here than you do in the base car. In the base car, it was fine. It, it was totally a Mazda. It felt like a Mazda, drove like a Mazda. Here, the limits are higher. Granted, not to the point of a 992, but this type of car, and I would argue it would need a, a better suspension or at least better tuning of the suspension because you feel a little bit more pitch from side to side, specifically in the rear end of the car as you push it more aggressively. And that brings us to an incredibly important point about this car that you, me, Colvin, and the rest of the folks at Mazda need to be very honest about. Who is the intended driver? Because if you're sorting this out from Mazda folks, I would argue the tuning of this suspension in the turbo needs to be a bit stiffer, more on the side of dynamics rather than ride comfort and composure. So the obvious question, of course, is where's the clutch pedal? Um, the answer is not as obvious as you might think. So I gotta go back to like 2010 when I went to Le Mans as a, as a spectator. Um, 
And when I was there, I got to go to our, our uh, office in, in France and picked up a CX-7 diesel manual, which is a really cool unicorn of a car. CX-7s were fun to drive. We didn't get manuals, we didn't get diesels, so I was excited to drive this thing. And as much as it handled well and had lots of torque, it was not the fun to drive car that I was expecting it to be, largely because the big mismatch between the way the power band, power is delivered in a diesel with lots of torque and not a lot of power. The way you want to drive it manually, you want to stretch each gear out, um, you want to kind of rev it up, you want to have the, the, the torque kind of keep building as you rev. And with the torque curve rolling down as you're revving up, your natural shifting rhythm just doesn't feel right. I found I was always in the wrong gear, I was always doing the wrong things, and I just felt like the car would have been more fun with an automatic, which is a really strange thing to say. That's kind of the way the power band is on this 2.5 turbo. It's really torque heavy. 320 foot-pounds of torque down low, uh, and then you know 227 if you're if you're cheap, or 250 if you buy the expensive gas. The torque band is still doing this kind of thing where it's it's descending as you as you climb through the revs. Uh, that's really really well matched to an automatic transmission. It means you don't have to do nearly as many downshifts. You have a much more direct throttle response. But when you stick it with a manual, it's completely out of sync. So if we were to re-engineer our big manual transmission to fit into this car, which would be a job in itself. We didn't have to re-engineer the whole engine to have a very different power band to go with that, at which point we should also completely re-engineer the suspension and the tires and the brakes and the all-wheel drive system even more until we have a Mazda Speed 3, which is a pretty good idea also. Um, but at the end of the day, that's a much bigger engineering exercise than what this was. This is an answer to uh, people saying this is a great car, but boy, I wish it had more power. And frankly, uh, our, our engineering budgets and our engineering manpower are busy engineering some other cool stuff that I can't tell you about yet uh, that uh, not only will be really cool, but it's also going to sell a lot better. Let's put aside Coleman for a minute and touch upon some design notes because Ken and his team, they made very subtle updates but they work incredibly well. The ones you notice the most are the black trim on the spoiler in the rear, as well as the air dam that is also painted black, works incredibly well with the sole red. Ken and his team made a couple more changes so that the turbo stands out. That would be the mirror fairings and the wheels also painted black. The combination really works well. Would love to have seen more changes in the interior, maybe changes in detailing like the stitching or perhaps a two-tone setup like the seats and the door panels being one color and the top of the dash and the floor being another color and that's only on offer in the turbo. Because after all, cost a couple more bucks, why not make it look the part? And so we arrive at a rather unexpected place. This, while very good, I am just not in love with it. And no, it has nothing to do with the car itself. You see, it is screwed together very well. It is super fun to drive. And truth be told, it probably exceeds all its competitors. Rather, the problem is 35 grand is a hell of a lot of money. That opens up so many doors in my head. One could have something more efficient, more luxurious, uh, bigger, or faster. Granted, wouldn't hit all the points on the Venn diagram that this does, but 35 large for a C-segment five-door hatchback, that, that's just a bridge too far for me. Put another way, I would want that to be a Mazda Speed 3, but I kind of get the whole opportunity cost argument that Dave gave us, or put a completely different way, one would really need to love a Mazda 3 to love this, or putting it perhaps the most prudent way, the base engine with the manual transmission. Until I see you next time, bis später. So I know Motorman always complains that we put this Tupperware on the engine, but the reason is because you got to put Tupperware over your spaghetti. I mean, it, it's there's too much stuff under here. It's the only way to make it pretty is, is to cover it up. Kind of like Motorman's shirt.